Coming up this week on the Racing Insiders, we go to the ALMS round at VIR, the next to the last round in the ALMS history. Pirelli World Challenges in Houston, we've got a new champion. And the World Rally Championship in France, a new champion there, the first time in 10 years. We've got somebody named Loeb, who's not the king. And the Playboy Mazda MX-5 Cup, that's also in Houston. We've got it all covered next on the Racing Insiders. Welcome back to another edition of the Racing Insiders, the only place in broadcasting where you're going to get sports car content every week. I'm Bill Wood in Los Angeles. We're joined by Greg Kramer for the first time in our weekly show. Greg, welcome. He's with Jeff Lepper, both in Houston. Guys, welcome. Well, thanks very much, Bill. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Uh, and obviously, this has uh, been an interesting event on a lot of levels here for all of the series that are running here. And uh, it's, it's uh, of course, now an absolutely glorious, cool day after a few days of immense heat, humidity, and then rain this morning. And uh, later on, we'll be talking about a Pirelli World Challenge race that was off the charts. But of course, the thing that we want to talk about right now is the American Le Mans series. Bill, you talked about it. it's the penultimate round, second to the last round of the championship. Only the second year the series has run at Virginia International Raceway, and it turned into an absolute scrap. And it was a number of really interesting developments. First of all, obviously the LMP1 championship has been wrapped up and concluded. But nonetheless, the Dyson team arrived, they brought Guy Smith, and they brought Johnny Molan, one of the few drivers who's run in the American Le Mans series at least one race in every year of its 15-year existence. They brought Johnny Molan in, and Guy Smith put that car on pole. Absolutely surprised everybody, particularly the Pickett Racing Muscle Milk team, and they ran very, very competitively throughout the race. And it really came down to just a little bit of a pit stop strategy a little bit later in the race. And the Pickett team executing to perfection, put them into the front. They ended up on the overall and in the P1 category, getting their eighth consecutive win, an absolutely staggering season for the guys at Muscle Milk. The other category, of course, of huge interest was the GT category. Closing on the championship, it's the class that has uh, some of the most intense competition going in the sports car racing global arena right now, and it did not disappoint. In the end, it was Olivier Beretta and Matteo Magliacelli in the Risi Ferrari, which has been snake bit at best this year. They had a pole earlier in the year, but they've had a lot of races with huge incidents, missed a race trying to rebuild the car. They actually came back and put together a near perfect event and brought home a victory there. The other big story in that category was the team that was second, the core auto sport Porsche team, in the hands, of course, of the legend American factory driver, Pat Long, joined for the second race by Colin Brown, switching from the prototype cars as an indication of the pairing we might see in the Porsche GT factory program next year. It was announced it will go to core with that brand new 991 car and they put together a fabulous run, executing perfectly a superb strategy, and were able to hang on and defeat the points leading number three, a copy where Corvette, Camion Magnuson, and Antonio Garcia, they ended up third. The news there, though, was they stretched their points margin over Dirk, uh, uh, Dirk Mueller in the BMW and stretched that margin going into the season finale at Petit Le Mans. So it was mission accomplished, and in ways, for the Corvette team, it was mission accomplished as well as Chevrolet clinched their 10th championship in 15 years of competition. But those of you who've been watching the race, and Bill, I'll pose this, this question to you. One thing everybody's going to be talking about is that crash late in the race that really created so many strategy options that affected the outcome of the race between the one of the GT Porsches, it was the uh, Paul Miller Racing show part entry, and the second of the Momo GT cheat cars heading into turn eight, contact when that show part car tried to come through, contact, and a huge wreck. It was spectacular. Bill, I think everybody involved in it was lucky to walk away pretty much on the stage. The ALMS is full of stories like this, and especially at VIR, a lot of smaller tracks fell out of the calendar for next year in the United Sports Car Championship. They're trying to keep VIR in this, and uh, it's because of racing like this, tight racing, 
Uh, it's probably the closest thing to a bull ring that we're going to have in the uh, new racing series. So yes, all of that said, it is good to have this mix up in a long two hour plus race. It's good to have this mix up. Otherwise you do get some droning that's going on. And uh, I love racing, but I like to see guys respond to it and respond to changes uh, at the last minute. That's part of the fun of paying attention to what's going on. Don't you agree, Greg and Jeff? Uh, absolutely fantastic racing. And this series, uh, you know, it's in its final couple of years. Of course, Burgess, everybody's going to put their best foot forward while keeping an eye on what's going to unfold in the future. And I think that's exactly what we're going to see happen. And of course, we'll be following it as it heads to Petit Le Mans on the unbelievably tough and challenging road Atlanta in a few weeks' time. But next in our show, we are going to be talking about, as I said, a Pirelli World Challenge, a couple of season finales for the Touring Car and Touring Car B-Spec and the GT and GTS category that were absolutely unbelievable on a track that has presented challenges from the first green flag, and they didn't disappoint. Stay tuned here to The Racing Inside. Let us know what you think about what The Racing Insiders have to say. Tell us on Facebook and Twitter. Want to keep up with all the racing action at the track? Well, download the new Go Racing TV iPhone and Android app. And remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Welcome back to the Racing Insiders. I'm Bill Wood in Los Angeles. Greg Kramer and Jeff Lepper are in Houston, trackside. You can hear the cars going by in the background. Let's go to the Pirelli World Challenge that they covered earlier. Guys, a great race. The rain sort of mixed it up. We talked about mixing it up in the first segment. The rain mixed it up today. Yeah, it sure did. I'll tell you, the GT GTS race was a barn burner. We had weather, we had strategy, we had championships to be decided. But in the end, it was Johnny O'Connell in the GT class. He rose to the pinnacle of this championship season last year, got the win this year over James Sofranos, who suffered a flat tire by contact. It was a pandemonium in the GT class. GTS, not so much. Lost an Oscar block. He leads flag to flag. Jack Baldwin shuffled back through the end. That clinched it for Lawson Oshabach on bonus points purely for Lawson Oshabach. Yeah, it was a fabulous battle in both of them. And uh, I mean, Rene Rocks was brought in by James Cronus and the Audi team to serve as a wingman. And boy, did he live up to it. Came up through the pack, perhaps got a little bit over aggressive at certain points of the race. Uh, Randy, uh, obviously Randy Popes, went to the front and was a serious player for the uh, the race win, which affected some of the championship outcomes. And in GTS, Lawson Oshabach had one option win and hope that things behind him sort of sorted themselves out and that's exactly what happened uh, both pd cunningham and mark wilkins put on a fabulous drive pushed baldwin back and in the end it was a championship for lost in Ashenbach. and in turkey car b spec we also had a fabulous battle a day before yeah, yesterday the TC and the TCB class there, Robbie Davis and Ernie Francis Jr. came into the championship one point separated those two drivers on the start. Robbie Davis gets in the marbles into the first turn chicane, slides sideways, comes back across the track. Who does he run into? But Ernie Francis Jr. Again, he's not able to continue. Robbie was able to back up and go and make the second race. Ernie Francis Sr. gives up his car to his kid for the second race. Still, not enough points. Ernie Francis Jr. unable to finish that first race. That cost him the championship. Robbie Davis, your TCB champion. Before the green flag, though, Ryan Winchester, our touring car champion at LA Industries, Honda Civic SI. Bill, it was it was really pandemonium here this weekend in all aspects of the Pro Bowl Challenge. It's, you've got to feel a little bit for James Sofronis. The season was that he and Johnny O'Connell were upside down all year. When Sofronis was strong, O'Connell had problems and vice versa. Sofronis had such great expectation for a championship run. And then at the end of the season, it ends in uh, all apart. You've got to feel for him right now. Yeah, right? I mean, 
he still has to hold his head up not high. For what he's gone through, that independent team, a customer-based Audi program, he has nothing but uh, to be proud of. I mean, he really does. Well, he does, and I'm sure he's immensely frustrated, as you said, Bill, for one reason. He's one of the guys who is in the top five of all-time starts in the Pirelli World Challenge. And he has the wins, but he has yet to get the championship. This was his best shot to date, and it didn't pan out. So while he should be very proud of what he and the team achieved this year, I'm sure he's absolutely gutted with how things turned out. We do need to mention one thing, though. This has been this event uh, with the track and the issues and the problems, and then you fold in the rain today, the other racing that unfolded today in the wet. Uh, the IndyCar race going on behind us right now. They have all had cautions, full course cautions in the race. The Pirelli World Challenge GT and GTS boys in atrocious conditions on a very difficult track. Not one caution. This says a lot about the professionalism in the series. Yeah, it sure does. And you can't ask for better racing than we had here all weekend long in all four of our classes for the Pirelli World Challenge. Right after this, the World Rally Championship in France. Next to the last round of the season, new champion at stake, backstories, rain, power stage at the beginning of the event. Instead of the end of the event, a lot of headlines. That's next when the Racing Insiders comes back. This segment of the Racing Insiders was brought to you by GoRacingTV.com. For racers, by racers. Welcome back to the Racing Insiders. I'm Bill Wood in Los Angeles. We have Greg Kramer and Jeff Lepper, Pirelli World Challenge commentators there at the Houston round. They got some racing going on in the background, but let's go to Rally France right now the second to the last round in the World Rally Championship. The main storyline is Sebastian Auger at Volkswagen getting a chance to win his first championship. The next story is that this will be the first time in a decade that someone other than Sebastian Loeb is going to be the champion. The last one not named Loeb to win the championship was Peter Solberg. He's now in Rallycross. Loeb was there at the event. It's his home round. There was a lot of looking back and forth between OJ and Loeb when they were together at Citroen. They didn't like each other too much. OJ was the prancing horse. He was ready to get on with his career. Loeb was the champion. He wanted to have someone support him. OJ didn't like that role. That's why he ended up at Volkswagen. Opened the stage to rally France. They started off OJ won the championship on Thursday before the rally got underway. The power stage that's normally run at the end where they try to bring everybody in, live TV, fans, they try to bring everybody in, extra points. Ogier got that one point that he needed to separate himself from Terry Noval in the championship, so he won the championship. He went out and party. He admits that when the rally started, he wasn't focused too much, so Danny Sordo, uh, Ogier's teammate, Nieri Mati Latvala, at Terry Novell and Sebastian Loeb. They all took off and left him. He was having a hard time getting focused. The rains came, muddy conditions, bad roads, and Sordo fell off, Neuville fell off. They all started to come around to OJ. They backed up to him. OJ snapped his head together and said, hey, this is time for me to win. And he did. He took over the event. Then it just became OJ and Loeb. They fought. Loeb was in the event until Sunday morning, early when he fell off the road, crashed out of the event, and Ogier was able to cruise to his win. I think it was his seventh win this year. He's dominated the championship all year long, and he will be able to be a champion. His first championship, and obviously the first one for Volkswagen and their uh, remodeled team, around OJ. It was a great event, a lot of drama, a lot that was going on. Loeb ended up apologizing to his fans who came to see him his last round in the World Rally Championship. He wasn't able to close the deal. He apologized, but his fans will get a chance to watch him in FIA GT racing and in the World Touring Car Championship. In fact, Loeb has already won one round last weekend in the FIA GT, in his own team of McLarens. This guy doesn't know how to lose, apparently, guys. 
Well, he certainly is going to leave a legacy, Bill. I mean, when you talk about rally, we have Carlos Sainz, you know, Colin McRae, the great names in rally. You can add that to the top of the list. It's going to be Sebastian Loeb. You can't go wrong with that. Sebastian Ogier, first time in a decade there's been a different champion, not just a different manufacturer, not a different car make, but a totally different champion in a decade. That tells you the dominance that Sebastian Loeb has. I have to have a little bit of redemption for Danny Sordo though. Replaced at Rally Australia in the last round. That guy Chris crashed out twice. Now said Danny Sordo comes back in that Citron, finishes in second. A lot of redemption for him, Bill. And I wonder, Bill, if for Sebastian Loeb it isn't about new challenges. I mean, a few years ago, he tried his hand in a Pescarolo at Le Mans. I think he's just looking for, you know, perhaps that time to do something different. And as you pointed out, he's already seen some success in the FIA GT Championship, trying something a little different in World Touring Cars. Uh, Sebastian, I love your line, Bill. The man just doesn't know how to lose. He just wants to do that in another uh, venue right now. Uh, the guy's amazing. The Playboy MX-5 Cup is next. That was also in Houston. That's where everybody was racing, apparently. We'll have that right after this. The Racing Insiders will be right back. This segment is brought to you by Safe Racer. Want to keep up with all the racing action at the track? Well, download the new Go Racing TV iPhone and Android app. And remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Welcome back to the Racing Insiders. I want to talk about what happened at Houston last weekend, the big IndyCar weekend with the Pirelli World Challenge and the Playboy MX-5 Cup and the Support Series and Open Wheel. Well, it was the IndyCar race that ended in near tragedy on Sunday. Sato spun. Franchitti was trying to get around him. They, the wheels touched. Franchitti went into the catch fence. Fans were injured. It was a terrible accident. IndyCar says that they're going to investigate what happened to improve safety in the future. All the debris and everything that happened, though, affected the Playboy MX-5 Cup race that was supposed to follow the second of the two races, the two IndyCar races in the doubleheader weekend. Jim Daniels talked with officials of the Playboy MX-5 Cup to get an idea of what happens now that that important race was delayed and there's still the championship to be decided in that series. Here's Jim. Yeah, thanks guys. I got Chris Berg, uh, public relations coordinator for SCCA Pro Racing, specifically with the MX-5 Cup Series this weekend in Houston. Uh, Chris, you know, it got pretty scary there. They hauled Dario off. You had Chip Ganassi saying that Dario was okay. Then they canceled your race. There was a lot of daylight to go. You know, we were hoping that it was just because uh, they were going to run out of daylight. Uh, share with us a little bit more wh wh why exactly they canceled your event. Yeah, that's correct. Um, it, it was just a decision that the promoter made to uh, decide to cancel the rest of the races just out of respect for the fans, making sure that the uh, facility was in a state of, you know, perfect repair and uh, also, like you said, just in uh, trying to make the racing as safe as possible for everyone involved. Well, Chris, I know we got a tight battle in this Playboy Mix 5 Cup. Uh, at the top, uh, Christian Simzak has set the world on fire. Ten poles, lots of wins. Uh, talking to R. Mikhaisen, says that uh, he's a real deal. Can't find his car keys to the rental car, but he sure can drive the race car when he puts that helmet on. Uh, tell me how tight a battle this is. Go over the points with us uh, at the top. How does this all affect it and going to be shaking out? Well, um, as a result of qualifying, Christian Shimzak actually was awarded the pole app after a uh, disqualification of the provisional pole sitter, Patrick Gallagher. So he would be awarded those three additional points for qualifying. Uh, that would bring his point total for the season up to uh, 531 points and uh, lengthen his point lead in the championship to 15 markers. Well, Chris, you're moving to Road Atlanta next, I think, for a doubleheader at the Petit Le Mans. Uh, the Shimzak have this in the bag. Is he shoe in to win this? Uh, points are tight, so I'm, obviously he can't have a mechanical, what have you. But uh, what do you think about how tight this race is in the Playboy Mix 5 Cup? Well, it's still a very tight championship battle. Like I said, there's only 15 points that separate uh, Christian uh, Shimzak and uh, Elliot Skier for that point championship. So... With the uh, with the number of points still up for grabs, um, it's really still anybody's bad, anybody's 
championship to win at this point. Well, folks, that's Chris Berg, Public Relations Coordinator with SECA Pro Racing, Playboy MX5 Cup. Thank you very much, Jim. Thanks, Jim. A terrible accident, a lot of repercussions. They're still boiling over. The Playboy MX5 Cup will be keeping an eye on that championship. Next, when the Racing Insiders comes back, the weekend calendar. We'll be right back. A small calendar this week, but big events. The Formula Drift 10th season closes. The final round at Irwindale. Three guys, I believe, are going for the championship, including Michael Essa. Basically a step above sportsman, but he has a chance. He's the points leader. He has a chance to get his first championship. And the Bathurst 1000 V8 Supercars, an incredible event. One of the highlights globally in racing. The Bathurst 1000 the big mount panorama, big downhill, an off-camber left at the end of that downhill, just an incredible race. Formula Drift and V8 Supercars. We'll have some coverage for you next week on the Racing Insiders. That's the weekend calendar. Guys, what are you going to be doing next week? Well, uh, we got the banquet tonight. We're going to crown all four of our champions for the Pirelli World Challenge our 2013 season, and it was a great season. We're going to cap it off with a party tonight. For me, personally, I got married yesterday at Victory Circle here at the Grand Prix of Houston. I'm on my way to honeymoon Monday morning. And unfortunately for Jeff, he's going to honeymoon with me and my <laughs> wife. And so we're going to spend a little time together on Panama City Beach in, in a condo that we've arranged as our wedding present to him. Uh, it was a great time uh, at the, in Victory Circle right here in Houston last night watching him get hit. So that's our plans for the week. Next weekend I'll be doing a little MotoGP that will be coming up from Malaysia out of the studio in Charlotte. And then, of course, uh, that's going to wrap up our week. It's always fun to hear what these guys are doing. When I grow up, I want to be just like them, travel all over the world and watch car races. You can't ask for a life any better than that. Here in Los Angeles, I'm Bill Wood for Jim Daniels, Greg Kramer, Jeff Lepper in Houston. Want to see you people back next week. Until then, take care of each other, respect each other. I'm Bill Wood.